Paul tells us, Godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6 In the same way also, I desire that women adorn themselves in decent clothing, with modesty and sensibleness, not adorned with braiding or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but with good works, which becomes women professing godliness. 1 Timothy 2, 9-10 Modesty is the key here. God is not against you wearing jewels, wearing good garments, good shoes. Silver is his and gold is his. If you can afford that £14,000 engagement ring, then go for it. But if you have to get into debt for five years or more, just for an engagement ring or a dowry or a wedding ceremony, you are acting like the world. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what a man has, and not according to what he has not. 2 Corinthians 8, 11-12 the man or the woman is eager and willing to get married. That is what matters. It is according to what he or she has. He or she should not be in debt because of marriage. Are we trying to impress people or God with our dowries, engagement ring and wedding ceremonies? Some of the American preachers of the gospel, who had wedding ceremonies that cost one million dollars, divorced just a few years after their wedding. They did not even last five years. If you have a million dollars to spend on your wedding, good for you. But if I, Jerry, only have one dollar to spend, God is pleased with my wedding. There will still be introduced marriages like that of Rebecca and Isaac in Genesis 24, like that of Jacob and the daughters of Laban, for his mother Rebecca told him to go to the house of his uncle and marry there, Genesis 28, 1-5. Isaac never saw Rebecca before his marriage and never had a picture of Rebecca. Today there are also other kinds of introduced marriages, at least the introductions were carefully planned one way or the other. Sometimes in churches they have a sister or brother who loves the Lord and is zealous for God. And the pastor or church leaders also know another sister or brother in another church who loves the Lord and is zealous for the things of God. So they talk to their church member about that particular sister or brother and they plan for them to meet. And they even tell you that the parents of the girl or of the man have told them that they would be very happy to have you as their in-law. Or what churches are now doing is they have groups of single men and women within the church. They give them the venue of the church to meet and organize social activities and discuss topics that are relevant to their life. They have nights out to the cinema or bowling or pizza nights or monopoly nights. In a way, the church is creating a venue for them to meet born-again Christians within the church. Churches now come together for singles conferences and singles activities. Today also with social media and Christian internet dating, people meet each other. You will not be able to stop social media, but we must equip people with the knowledge of the Word of God. Some ministers of the Gospel will say they do not believe that one should meet people on Facebook, Skype, WhatsApp, WeChat, Twitter or on Christian dating websites. They are entitled to their opinions, and we should respect their opinions. Some will even say, I think it's for creepy people, for lame people, non-spiritual people and losers. Well, they are entitled to their opinion. I just want to ask you a question. Does everybody who comes to your church do so because God spoke to them directly while they were praying in their house and gave them the address of your church and the time of your service like God did to Cornelius in Acts 10? The answer is no.
Less than 1% of the people who came to your church came because they were praying in their house and God gave them the name and address of your church in your time of worship. The majority came because someone invited them and introduced them to your church or because they heard your program on TV or on the internet. When they come and start attending the church and working in your church, do you say God sent them or not? Of course you say God sent them. The means God used was different, but God sent them. Some pastor will say, when it comes to meeting people for marriage, social media and Christian internet dating is not the way of the Lord. I will ask you, when it comes to salvation of souls, preaching of the gospel, healing the sick, raising funds for church mission, are the media and internet the means God uses? I bet your answer is yes. Once people are online, they will not just use the media, social media and internet, they'll not just use it to listen to your teaching and donate to your ministry, but they will also use it to meet people. You would rather help your congregation to navigate through that jungle of media, social media and internet, lest they become victims. When something is new, people are always afraid and easily label it evil or not spiritual enough. If we all came to Christ like Cornelius came to Christ in Acts 10 by the appearance of an angel who gave us the name of the preacher or the church, the address of the preacher or of the church, that would be awesome. But less than 1% of the people in the church had that Cornelius experience. I, Jerry, came back to Christ after a work colleague invited me to the church she attended. Sometimes the Lord wakes me up and tells me a title of a sermon and the name of the preacher who preached it. I come out of that vision and turn on my computer and type the title of the sermon and the name of the preacher and there it is on YouTube. Some pastors and elders in the church say, one married man in our church left his wife or a sister he met on Facebook or other social media. I, Jerry, also know sisters and brothers who left their spouse because of someone they met on social media. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, Jehovah, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah seventeen nine to 10 My friend, there is nothing wrong with the knife. It is just a tool. It is the heart of the hold of the knife that is the problem. One can use the knife to chop onions and cut meat, prepare a nice meal for his friend. Another can use the same knife to kill his friend. Dynamite was initially invented to help miners, but the military saw it as a great means to blow the enemy into pieces. The same thing for media, social media and the internet. It is just a means. We need to teach our people the right usage. That brother or sister who left his or her spouse for a person they met online would have left sooner or later, social media or no social media, for that was the intention of their heart. I also know of brothers who go from church to church fornicating with sisters or dating three different sisters at the same time. They did not need the help of any social media to do that. The truth is, there are many Christians on social media, even on Christian dating websites. I, Jerry, was one of them. When I backslid, I went to some social websites, even chat forums. And that is where I met the lady I lived in fornication with. It was my heart that was wicked. I had already purposed to sin against the Lord. For I used to go to night clubs and pubs, and I had already met and fallen in sexual sin with the person I met in a nightclub. God says my people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. Hosea 11 verse 7 When a person has purposed to sin sexually against the Lord, he can use any means to do so. 
He can meet people at work, at university, at the supermarket, in the park, in the library, on the bus, on the train, etc. When a person has decided to date three women or four women at the same time, he does not need social media to do so. Even within the same city he can do so. For I know a so-called prayer warrior who was dating three women in the different churches within Manchester. He did not need the help of social media or Christian dating websites. The young generation has discovered that they can talk for hours on social media. What we should tell them is that when it comes to dating we should apply the same criteria whether for social media or Christian dating websites. The person must be genuinely born again and the marriage bed should not be defiled for God will judge fornicators. And you need to inform your pastor or leader let there be transparency. A dear sister called me and told me that the person she is dating wants to see me and talk with me. I asked her, did you meet him on Facebook? She denied it. But I had a witness in my spirit that she did. When the guy called me, I asked him, did you meet her on Facebook? He said yes. Initially I was angry at the sister for saying no when I had asked her. So I had a discussion with the brother for about an hour over the phone. He was a very serious born-again Christian, like the sister was. People lie for fear of men, because they do not want to be judged, especially by other Christians. Do not let your marriage be based on lies. If your marriage were introduced, do not be ashamed of it, for even Isaac had an introduced marriage. Yet the servant of Abraham prayed, and though it was an introduced marriage, if Rebekah had not fulfilled the request he had asked God for, he would not have brought her to Isaac. If you meet your spouse on social media or by internet dating, you do not have to lie about it either. If you also married your first cousin, second cousin, third cousin, you do not have to be ashamed of it either. I was truly impressed by the transparency of that Pakistani family in Huddersfield, England. Queen Elizabeth is not ashamed of being married to her third cousin, Prince Philip. They are not breaking God's law. It is not incest, as we have explained from Leviticus 18, 6 to 18. You should be proud of how you met your spouse. You do not have to invent a story and lie about that because you are afraid of people's opinion. I, Jerry, used to have strong opinions. I discovered that my opinion had no scriptural foundation. I am not recommending any means of meeting your future spouse. I am just explaining from the scriptures what is wrong and what is men's opinion and culture. Irrespective of the means used to meet the spouse-to-be, he or she must be genuinely born again no longer conform to the world that lies under the influence of the devil. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, and 1 John 5, verse 19. But conform to the image of Christ. Romans 8, verse 29. The Bible says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis 2, verse 21 to 25. Your spouse is not just the flesh of your flesh, meaning someone that you are attracted to physically, and have the same earthly center of interest. Christians who go and find unsaved spouses and try to convert them or go to nightclubs and pubs to meet their spouses are carnal Christians. They are still conformed to the world which is influenced by the devil.
instead of being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ as God predestined. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 and 1 John 5 verse 19 and Romans 8 verse 29. Carnal means pertaining to the flesh. Thus those Christians are now only looking for the flesh of their flesh in a spouse. Deep inside them they believe God is evil, that if they ask him for a fish he will give them a serpent, if they ask for an egg he will give them a scorpion, and if they ask for bread he will give them a stone. Luke 11 verse 11 to 13 They say, I will try my own thing and then ask God to bless it. I will have my own Ishmael and ask God to bless it. Abraham tried it with God. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give you a son also of her. Yes, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And God said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Genesis 17 verse 15 to 19 Abraham laughed because he did not believe God could answer his prayer, so he answered his own prayer by having Ishmael and then just wanted God to bless his Ishmael. My prayer is that you and I not be carnal Christians who only go for the flesh of our flesh, but let us also go for the bone of our bone. Whichever means you use to meet your future spouse that does not violate the Holy Scriptures, make sure that you go beyond the flesh of the flesh. Now the bone of your bone means a spouse that will help you fulfill your God-given destiny for the covenant of God to be established on earth through you. As it is written, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help, meet, fit, suitable, proper, qualified, convenient, adapted, as to a use or purpose for him. Genesis 2 verse 18 I read the Bible for years and did not understand what the Lord meant by the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh, until, in the beginning of 2015, Nell Melanda, a prophet of the Lord, gave me the revelation of what it means. If you trust God to help you find your spouse according to the full counsel of the written word of God, he will not only give you the flesh of your flesh, but also the bone of your bone. God is the only one who can give you the bone of your bone. Adam could not create the bone of his bone. God did it. God took one of his ribs and created Eve. You can find for yourself the flesh of your flesh, but only God can give you the bone of your bone. For he is the one who supernaturally matched you for his divine purpose. The flesh of Eve was not made from the flesh of Adam, but from the dirt or dust of the ground like God formed Adam's flesh from the dust of the ground. Genesis 2 verse 7 So, God will give you the spouse in whom the earthly things you love are and their earthly origins and earthly background are not necessarily the same earthly origin and background as yours. Yet the person God will give you, who is the bone of your bone, will be a person predestined from heaven to help you fulfill your God-given destiny in order to establish the covenant of God on earth through you. My prayer is that you will find that person predestined by God to be your spouse and obtain favor from the Lord. As it is written, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18 verse 22 
Sarah was the flesh of the flesh of Abraham. The Bible tells us it happened when Abram had come near to enter into Egypt. He said to Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know that you are a beautiful woman to look upon, and it will be when the Egyptians see you they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. I pray you, say that you are my sister, so that it may be well with me for your sake, and my soul shall live because of you. Genesis 12, verse 11 to 13. So Sarah was not only beautiful in the eyes of Abraham, but also in the eyes of all who looked upon her. People would kill to have her as a wife. That is how beautiful she was. So was Rebekah. As it is written, Isaac lived in Gerar, and the men of the place asked about his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say my wife, lest the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was beautiful of form. Genesis 26, 6-7 Ezekiel's wife was also the flesh of his flesh, for the Lord says she was the desire of Ezekiel's eyes. Ezekiel 24, verse 15 to 27. So it is the devil putting fear into your heart, that if you rely on God in the full counsel of his written word, he will give you a spouse that is not beautiful in your eyes, even the flesh of your flesh. On top of being the flesh of the flesh of Abraham and of Isaac, both Sarah and Rebekah were the bone of the bone of their spouses. They were the help meet that will help their spouse fulfill their God-given destiny and establish the covenant of God on earth, even by bringing Christ Jesus, the seed of Abraham, through whom all the families of the earth are now blessed. Again, I am talking to born-again Christians who are not yet married or who had a divorce and are planning to remarry. The Bible says of Adam and Eve, who were bone of the bone and flesh of the flesh of each other. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Genesis 2 verse 25 Those who are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That is why you must not merely stop at the flesh of your flesh in the spouse you are looking for, but those who are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be kindly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8, verse 5 to 9. Born-again Christians are in the Spirit 24-7 and not in the flesh. Paul is even questioning the salvation of so-called born-again Christians, who, though they are in the Spirit, are walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. He says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 16. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 25 Walking in the Spirit simply means doing what the counsel of the written Word of God says about a particular aspect of things that pertains to our life and godliness. God is not pleased with Christians who are carnal, even though He loves them. It saddens His heart that His children are at enmity against Him because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. As long as we are still carnally minded, God says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to Jehovah, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 7 to 8. Therefore submit yourselves to God by subjecting yourself to the full counsel of the written word of God. 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, double-minded ones. James 4, verse 7 to 8 To be continued